Hello, Mystery Port, Tutor Program, subscribers, and uh, YouTubers. Today is Monday. It's December 26, 2022, day after Christmas. Hope you have a, while, we're still, while things are still kind of normal, hope you're enjoying the holidays. Now, before we get started, this is the sixth and final Mystery Report. For 2022. My hope is to double that. We had four last year, six this year. Hope to double that with my prepping winding up. I'm hoping there's still more to do, but not nearly as much to do as has been done. And before we get started, I'd like to share some pictures with you. Starting starting right here. Uh, finally, this has been this was delivered, I believe, last January or February. And it's been sitting here. Don put up the tile and built the base and things. And this piping, you wonder why in the world does a piping look like that instead of just going up and over? The uh, has to do with the specs and the stove and getting the maximum amount of pipe. The, the number of feet with elbows is just over 10 feet. That's what I wanted to get so that there's more inside heat coming off of the pipes using this configuration right here. This thing right here is just wonderful. I wish that it was hooked up sooner now that it's hooked up. The uh, so a, a log, depending on the size, every one to two hours, and it runs. Just to give you an idea, oh, that's, uh, let's see if the picture's. Yeah, the, the, uh, we've cooked every meal on this since this, this started uh, two days ago. It was over the weekend that I put this together. And we'll be cooking on it. The thermostat, she keeps hers upstairs at about 72. Down stairs, I keep mine around 70, 71. And outside temperature has been really, really low over the weekend. Now it's around 40, but our thermostats show a higher temp. Right now, so the, the thermostats, you know, it's just above freezing outside, and the thermostats aren't even coming on. It's really great. Wish that, uh, again, I wish we'd done this sooner. And share, share with you some of the pictures. Oh, now I didn't pull up any of the, there was a fire, briefly, small, inside this chimney. And uh, David would have been probably upset with me, because he wanted to come over and check it before I, Actually, build a fire anywhere. Gary might have been upset with me, too. <laughs> upset with me too. But I'm a, I'm a mason. I've built chimneys. I, I know about flu liners and the threats involved. And there was a little fire that was right here. I have pictures of it during the Black Star Update Report. I'll show kind of what was going on. I monitored it for about a half an hour, and it burned off. And using this is not the only image. I took others, and you can see the walls are clean. There's no buildup beyond this. There was a little bit right here, and that burned out. So now, I mean, this was with the the wood burning stove burning rapidly. You know, everything on high, and smoke was coming out that you really can't see very well here. But you can see this was twilight outside, no fire, nothing clean on the inside. And this is our first uh, first meal. This is what it looks like inside. This is on a slow, a low setting. Took a little bit of time to figure out all the settings. This is a pretty complicated stove. It's one of the high-end ones because at the time the purchase was made, this is the only stove they had in stock. We, I was going to go for, you know, the simpler version, something. This one has the oven down here. Like this, I'm not kidding you. It was the only one in stock. It was quite, uh, quite spendy. Oh, boy. We don't like just talk about this guy. This is from my download file. And hamburgers. After the flip. It's taking some getting used to. It's not the same as made. Uh, and when we get through here, that's the start. A little wood pile over here. And had to keep our minimum distances. Ten and, was it ten and a half inches here. 12 inches up here. It does narrow down up here. Another reason for the lengthy 
um, pipe is because it's the hottest right here. And the more pipe you put on, it's going to be cooler, 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 cooler. You get next to the masonry. You get next to the tile wall. But everything is working just fine. A little bit of fire. Was that the first fire? Also, Gary, you might get upset with me a little bit. Didn't do things quite like you recommended. But the thing is, if you look inside of here, this this system has what most or many don't have. Gigantic. I didn't even know what these, they were heavy. Plates. There's a plate here, a plate here, and a plate on top. Big, heavy. So when you're building the first fire and you don't have these big, heavy plates, then... You can burn the paint off the sides, and you have to build small fires and let it kind of cure the paint. But it was not required. I started to do that with a smaller fire and then realized no need. So you could almost, I mean, it's uh, extremely hot. Don't get me wrong. But, uh, it only takes about two to three minutes to boil the water on top when this baby gets going. But uh, never had smelt one thing. No paint nothing it was just, just everything was just great this is the little pull valve to open up the push valve in the back to to uh open up the flue and then this is there's a valve here there's a valve this one here opens up the top one this one here's the bottom one and there's another one down here whenever you're cooking you push this to the left and it circulates the air down here really really cool system this is going to going town on the cooking my omelets usually come out better my mom used to make me i'm kind of uh famous in the family for being the omelet maker i would have all the ovens going i mean all the uh stoves going and cooking them for breakfasts whenever the at the family reunions and things people really love them i got these pictures in reverse order this is uh just before the flip and i didn't have enough uh pam so it didn't they didn't come out perfect just didn't have quite enough. This was for me and my darling. And this is how it starts off. I know. Looks nice, right? Onions, peppers. And you put those in first. And it's the smell that fills the house. And then you put the meat in. And then you put tomatoes in. Cover it. And it takes a little bit longer on this. That's how it starts off right there. And these fans... I'm going to get more of these fans. They work on the heat of the stove. You put these fans on, these, these props get the going. And on the, I didn't take a picture, but on the other opposite side is the gigantic um, air duct that pulls, sucks in for the heating system. So whenever this is running, and I'm not, I'm not kidding you, the, uh, it's just filling the house. This is, this is rated to heat. A house that's bigger than our house. And so uh, burning the wood is it's turning out to be really good. Oh, then uh, this that was from the first day. This is from yesterday. So we had leftovers from Thanksgiving. We cooked a big turkey for Thanksgiving. Had this leftover. You can see what's going on in here with the uh, Brussels sprouts and... We have cauliflower. I haven't put in the broccoli yet because the broccoli takes doesn't take as long. And put the lid on there and poof, everything steams right on the right on the wood burning stove. It was really a it was really nice, really cool weekend. It did a, and Gary, you're right. It filled the house with a different kind of heat than from the central system. It uh, made for with the it's like having a fire. But it's extremely controllable, one log at a time. And you pull the levers back and forth, and you get the exact amount of air. And it's just the um, had, the fire has not gone out yet. So I put kind of a large log on just before we retire in the evening and turn it on low. And the coals are still hot in the morning. The little fans are still burning. They're still turning in the morning. And then uh, get everything reset, and off you go again for another day. That's a lot of fun. Okay. Newsletter number six. The final newsletter for 2022. When this is completed, it'll be uploaded to the 2022 Mystery Report Dropbox folder. 
So all you subscribers, Mystery Report subscribers and Tutor Program subscribers, then you can, as soon as you see this video, it'll be uploaded already. So you can download it and then and follow along and click on the links. This is for Joseph. And he actually wrote me back in November. That's been sitting here for that long. Now, Gary and I have been talking. Gary is the most mature member of Christ's body walking this earth that sees God's hidden wisdom. He's in between where you are and where I am. Because he's been over here working with me Saturday after Saturday after Saturday. And he comes with a list of questions. And just by osmosis and by his questions, some of these newsletters, the questions are addressed to him. He was sending me lots and lots of questions. Now he can just bring them with me whenever he sees me. That's the way we've been doing things. You guys miss out on that a little bit. Gary, you might want to write to me your questions, and then when I answer them, we can create a newsletter out of it. So Gary and I have been talking, and he's ready to start helping more people, you know, those that are trying to understand the differences between the two Gospels, between the two churches. And I recommend that you come back over here. This is what my book, The Mystery Explained, looks like. It was written in 2005. The research was from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. The book was written in the summer of 2005. And that was just before the 9 That's whenever this investigation concluded. And then the 9-11 investigation started. That went for five years. This wasn't published until late 2017. And it's now available. When you, subs when you get your nanosilver, whenever you order... You, uh, whenever you subscribe to any of these four newsletter programs, you automatically get a copy of my book for free. It's the EPUB version attached. And when you get your nano silver, you also get the the uh, the PDF version. That is the extended version, a lot longer. See, this had to be shortened for publication, or it would have cost a hundred dollars to publish. Yeah, so you get the extended version and. No matter which of these that you subscribe to, and more and more of you are using Zelle right out of your online account. So you can write to me right here. Let me know you're going to use Zelle. And um, I had uh, answered one of those this morning, and you didn't know how much nano silver that you, that you wanted. So just go through the options right here. Watch this video, and um, that is the decision that you have to make. You can get five bottles, eight bottles. 20 bottles, 36 bottles, there's different. The more you buy, the less it costs per bottle. And one bottle makes, at the 500 parts per million concentration, makes three liters for each. So add everything up and then use Zelle and be sure to write to me right here because a lot of you don't want to use PayPal. That's how you do it. And if you don't want to use Zelle, you don't want to use Cash App, then and you don't want to use PayPal, then you can write to me at this email address and I will send you a P.O. box. A lot of people, but there has never been this many people that said, send me your P.O. box. I want to send you a snail mail letter and cash. I said, okay. And people have even sent silver, silver rounds and things like that to get uh, whatever it is that they, whatever it is that you want. If you want to copy my book, The Mystery Explained, you just come right down here if you're overseas. International, if you want inside the continental United States, and you can go to you can get it for about half the price, a little bit over half the price for the hardcover. If you go to Amazon.com, that's what it looks like. That's my name. Okay, and this is the what I came here to originally show you was the Black Star section right here, but this is the scripture videos. You're going to read my book, The Mystery Explained. You want to see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight? That's where you start. And Gary confirms this. This is what helped him to begin seeing the pattern in the three witnesses, starting right here, the two Gospels. Start with the basics. Two churches. Four baptisms. The differences between God and my Father art in heaven. Differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. And then the God's true Bible code. God has a true Bible code. He gives you the key in Genesis 1-1. Happy to help you. More than happy to help you to see it. Once you see it, it changes everything. Okay. So this newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood testifying in the Holy Scriptures from Genesis 1 
went through Revelation. So said all that to say this. See this Bible chat? This is what look at the dates. This is what was happening just before the pandemic. This was my goal to have a one hour or two hour chat for tutor program subscribers. There's a twenty five dollar program just gives you access to the mystery reports. And then there's a fifty dollar program that makes you a tutor program subscriber. That means send me your questions, I answer them and put them in the newsletter. And it's gonna start probably just after February. January is impossible because everybody has to get their 2023 Dropbox photo link notifications. And last year I had to work until the, the so on the 30th and the 31st, nine hours each day to get all those notifications out. So I would anticipate that it's going to, January is going to be pretty much the same. There are fewer subscribers, but with so much going on, then we'll see. I don't know exactly how January is going to shake out. But then right when that's done, before I can get to the prepping, because it's still February, it's going to be freezing outside. Not going to want to run outside and start digging holes. Can't do that. And so that's going to be a perfect time to start on a Tuesday, the tutor program. So all of the, I'll make a special video report for the for a tutor program subscribers and mystery report subscribers. If you want to upgrade to be part of that, then uh, Gary's going to be a super administrator and, and we'll be appointing other people that want to be administrators. It's going to be pal talk or teeny chat or one of these chat rooms. Everybody that's a tutor program person um, that wants to be, that wants to receive the link then let me know hold off until the end of january because you're right now i don't have it's not put together yet but that's what we want to do and if i can't be there for whatever reason then gary can open up the room and help with the simple you know with the simple stuff and as more questions you ask him the more research he does the better he's going to get and maybe david will come want to come along maybe don maybe you want to come along and others peter I think you canceled, Peter. You're over there in Europe. You feel like you're all by yourself. This might be something that you want to do. And others of you that have been tutor, been tutor program members, you got disappointed because of COVID and I couldn't do the chat. Just couldn't do it. It's impossible. And my, my uh, connection was too slow. Then that got upgraded. And now everything's coming back together. So look i'm looking forward to starting that after the first of the year and after we get to the i get through the january note the um dropbox photo link notifications now 17 minutes in finally get to get to the topic here three witnesses testify to whom this is from joseph big time supporter joseph sees some things he's having difficulty seeing other things he's not as mature as gary but you know what joseph gary's between you and me and I want to do more to help tutor program members connect together like the survival group members so that you guys can ask each other questions and, and everybody can kind of grow together in seeing things. And more and more of you are going to see, man, wow, and you're going to go through the program and you're going to realize that the, like Gary, he's realizing that he's grown more than he, that he's realizing that he's his growth. And that he his ability to help other people, especially with the simple things, more and more of you, I'm, that's likely to happen. And I said we take advantage of it for right up until the Black Star gets here. Okay, so hi Joseph, thank you for writing. This was like I said back in November. He says hi Terrell again. Thank you for all you do. I have a few questions. I and I want to elaborate, but I think it is a waste of time right now. So here they are. So in other words, this is the simple version. And Joseph and I have spoken on the phone. And we have, he sent me emails. And he's just really loving it. He wishes that he could grow faster. And that's part of what this is about. And um, Joseph, you're going to see in this report that like this diagram wasn't shared with you. That these links were not activated. So I've gone afterwards this morning and created a better presentation using the backbone, you know, the framework of what you were originally sent. So you can get more information out of this one right here than you did from my actual email to you that was sent uh, in the early part of November. So he says, a witness testifies about something or someone. 
What are the three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, testifying to? So somebody that's coming along, somebody that's first seeing it, this is one. Of, this is the kind of, the, of questions that I'm going to see. So, the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water testify about many things simultaneously for those with eyes from God to see via his living word. So, the way this works is, Paul describes the babes in Christ, and he describes them mature. 1 Corinthians 2, start at 6 for the mature. 1 Corinthians 3, you start at the top of the chapter. For the babes, the infants. So, the mature members of Christ's body can see more and see the testimony of, like the Son testifying for the Father and the Holy Spirit and testifying for the heavens, testifying for all the blood witnesses, depending on how mature you are. The babe, they see the more simple things. They, they, can, they, they can accept the milk. They can't accept the meat yet. They're not ready. They're crawling along and rather than walking and running like somebody that's mature. So in these reports, my hope is to hit somewhere in the, in the middle and to be able to have something, to have some milk and have some meat. So the chances are, particularly if you have not been exposed to the Mystery Explained, the Three Witnesses, you may have never heard the concept before. Nobody else in the world teaches this way. Some will mention spirit, blood, and water, but for decades, I, I, after they had the internet, my, my early uh, correspondence with scholars around the world was through the U.S. Postal Service. There wasn't any internet back in the 70s and the 80s, and even into the early 90s. Then I was letters, and... Now we have the advantage of the internet to be able to be able to do these things. So that's a this is going to be one that it depends and on your maturity level. Then on the surface, the three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water all testify about the original singularity, frozen motionless from our earthbound perspective in God's infinite realm. So Gary and I go back and forth about this quite a lot. And visualizing the way things are happening. So I pulled up this image right here to give you an illustration of John's vision in Revelation. This is what he's looking through. This is the direction out he's looking through. John is looking right through the he's looking through the tabernacle where the lamb is. And he's looking right through and seeing the face of the man. That is Jesus Christ at the right hand of God. To so these living creatures, they are the lion, God to come. The eagle, God who is. The bullock, God who was. The throne of God. These are four living creatures from John's perspective. Now, God has a vision that's this way, looking through the eyes of the eagle, God who is. His God must test, he must communicate with us through these three witnesses. He must, because he's infinite. Finite cannot comprehend infinite. That's why these three witnesses were created. They are incarnations that allow the infinite almighty God to exist inside of time and space that he created. Time and space are artificial. They, they're, they're not real. This earth is artificial. It's not real. The heaven is created. It has a beginning and an end. It's not real. It's real from the perspective of the host that's inside, but they're incarnations. The only realm that's real is this one. This is where you are gods. Not you are God, the Almighty, but he makes his son in his image to be gods, to be infinite. We are infinite here. And we have hosts that he placed inside of us. And our brethren incarnate inside of us. And we incarnate inside of them. We know our brethren intimately from the inside out. And we are placed around a giant table. The most favorite brother is placed at the right hand, right there. And then the next, and the next, and the next, and the next, and the next. So at my right hand, Gary, David, Don, Israel, Eric, you know, it goes, that's the way that it works. The ones that are the nearest to you, the ones that you help the most, and the ones that help you the most, back and forth, those are your brethren. 
they end up on your right side. Then there's those on your left side, the ones you don't really, you know, they're just rub you the wrong way, kind of. And so your outward appearance is governed by the way you position your brethren around this great table. That's what makes all of God's sons individuals, by the way we place our brethren in this realm that's right here. So God's looking at us this way. God's son, the face of the man, at his right hand is looking at us this, from this direction, from the almost infinite realm. This realm is infinite. This realm is almost infinite. It contains this realm. It's like this is the infinite shell, this is the white of the egg, and this is the yolk. All that is explained in my book, The Mystery Explained. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See this right here? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I have other images up to be able to, in order to show you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Perfect singularities. The earth existed this, this way for ages. Just read Ecclesiastes 1. It talks about the ages that existed before us. This is how it was. Nobody was born. Nobody died. No angels. No men. No women. All singularity hosts. The division of the creation of the heavens and the earth came by the destruction of this singularity. Representing Adam. As he is in the infinite realm. Perfect, whole, and complete. He was killed here. That created the need to rebuild Adam Humpty Dumpty style. For that to happen, God had to create Adam through his word again. That's what the earth is. This perfect earth with all of its hosts. He had to create this heaven. This is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit as the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word is God in the infinite realm. This is an incarnation. So in order for God to send his word into this realm, then first of all, darkness, Genesis 1-2, darkness was upon the face of the deep because Adam was destroyed, killed, murdered, sacrificed in the same way that he was in God's infinite realm. This is a replay of what's already happened. Ecclesiastes 1, start at 9. Things that are being done or have already been done. So, this creation was not created by a big bang. A previously existing creation was here, full of singularity hosts, that was destroyed. God reconstituted those broken remains into the heavens, the heaven, and the earth. The heavens, the heaven, and the earth reconstituted. This is this original, this is Genesis 1 1. This image is shows the earth and the heavens in the heaven of Genesis 1 8. So God had to send the light, Genesis 1 3, the light into heaven of this creation. That light is the Lamb of God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has one singularity host in heaven. All of this is for the restoration of all things. It is to restore the heavens, heaven, and the earth, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit back into their original singularity forms. So that this Adam, the first Adam, and this Adam, the last Adam, can walk together as Adam and the Lord God, with Eve back inside of him, back through this second veil into the infinite realm and be restored that re restoration process happens in the blink of the flash of a single moment from our infinite realm perspective. That realm is frozen motionless, and during this moment that it is frozen, Adam is dead. And all the hosts that incarnated inside of him, that includes you and me. So yes, you're a god in the infinite realm. You're still there. The you that's here is the incarnation of the incarnation of the incarnation of you that incarnated inside of Adam inside the infinite realm. So you have to be restored. I must be restored. The restoration of all things means the restoration of each cell of Adam's body here and here so that Adam can be restored here. So we all go back into this realm as members of Adam's body. When we get there, we meet ourselves 
as gods that also have Adam inside of their body along with all your other brethren. That's the story. That's the reason that we're here is for judgment. The judgment of the devil, the beast and the false prophet. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet are Satan in this infinite realm. They are broken into three in this realm and in this realm. So the devil, the, the uh, son of destruction, and their false prophet are going to be thrown in the lake of fire that is in here. Now, all this is about judgment. You're either a victim or you're a perpetrator. Those of us who God sent the preacher to obey the gospel, we are victims. God's putting us together, Humpty Dumpty style, and he's seating us in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus here so that we can be members of the Lamb's body here and judge the world and the angels. Because the world, the men and the angels have to be put back together again. So they can go here and then they can go back into the infinite realm inside of Adam, the first Adam and the last Adam. So this is the same picture that I, that's the same picture. It starts off with three orbs and then it gets a little more complicated. John's looking right across here. Okay, so the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit testify about the Word through whom all things were called to exist. I have those verses pulled up. I'm going to read the verses until it looks like we're going to, this is going to be too long of an update. Okay, this, yeah, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Which one was I going to pull up for you? Oh, Genesis 1, 1 through 3. Okay, yeah, that's the right place. Because below it, see, this right here is the key that unlocks the door. This key that unlocks the door has three witnesses testifying for it in the New Testament. These three verses of John 1 say the same thing as this. It's just the tabernacle is laid open. Here it is. In the beginning was the Word. That This, by the way, should be singular. The heaven is singular. In the beginning was the Word, which is heaven. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. See, this, this past tense here is not past tense. It's aorist tense. So there are, the aorist tense doesn't translate into English very well. Every scholar, doesn't matter the, the transcript, whether it's critical text or received text, doesn't matter. They, every single use of the aorist tense in the Bible is translated in the past tense because they don't know how to do it. There are three different um, types of the aorist tense. And what to me, the aorist tense is a, it's a uh, verb, it's a tense of per, uh, perpetuity. Some things are perpetual that have no beginning and no end. Some things are perpetual that have a beginning. And so, right here, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word is God. The Word in the same, they are the same exact thing. You can't separate God and His Word from in the infinite realm. The reason that God is separated from His Word and the Word, God's Word is broken here is because God's word is an incarnation. Heaven is an incarnation. It was created. God says, word, go over there and incarnate as heaven and then create the earth, Adam, inside yourself again. So it's starting off the slate just like it did before. So he was in the beginning with God. All things, that's the earth of Genesis 1.1. All things came into being through him, through the word, and apart from him, not even one thing came into being that has come into being. So everything made in the earth, that's the whole universe, seen and unseen, heavens, heaven, and earth, everything was called into to exist through God's word. That is through heaven, the incarnation. So think about it carefully to realize that God and his word are still one in the infinite realm. God's word has no need of redemption. God's need, word has no need of restoration. He has no need of anything. He's one with God right now. God's word incarnate does need restoration because he was the word singularity. But right now he's testifying as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit had a beginning. 
emerging from the Word. They're going to have an end whenever they go back together into the Word. So they're temporary. I know that to some people that sounds like blasphemy. That's a statement that I wanted to make. If you're a babe, you, and you're not going to be able to see the ends of these things. And it's going to, some of what I'm going to share with you is going to look a lot like heresy. I'm sorry for that. But that's not because of, of the truth. It's not because of what's written in God's word. It's not God's vision that he gave to me. It's your interpretation. That has, that's, hasn't been fixed yet. Okay, so now we can go back over here. I actually wanted to be, now you can see my desktop. I got a little bit ahead of myself. This is where I wanted to be. Okay, so Genesis 1 1 and Genesis 1 1 through 3, I hope that you can see it how these three verses that start off John lay open the tabernacle for what's right here. So the Word and Heaven are the same thing. They're both singularities. They end up being the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father and the Holy Spirit also testify about the Son, testifying of the Word, as they also testify about all the other spirit witnesses and water witnesses. The Father testifies about all the spirit witnesses. The Holy Spirit testifies about all of the water witnesses. It's just we have to grow to see that and understand that. Now, I do believe that I pulled up this chart just to give you an idea. God's essence, love, light, and life. The realms, the infinite realm, the, the word realm, and the earth. The heavens, heaven, and the earth. The three witnesses of God's infinite realm. God who is to come, God who, who is, God who was. So, you can go right on down the list. Elijah, Christ, and Moses. The prophet, the kings, and the priests. The body of Elijah, the body of Christ, and the body of Moses. Paul writes about the body of Christ. That's us. He writes about the body of Moses, too. 1 Corinthians 10. He doesn't write about the body of Elijah. That's is what God does throughout his word. He gives you one or two witnesses and expects you to figure out the third one. Even in the law, it's written that two or three witnesses must testify. That's the way to get that God's word. So the body of Elijah, you're not going to see. You're also going to see God's mystery. Colossians 2.2. 2. You're going to see it. He reveals God's mystery is Christ. And then he's going to talk about the mystery of Christ. Ephesians 3.4. Colossians 4.3. The mystery of Christ. God's mystery and the mystery of Christ. There's one missing. God's mystery. The mystery of Christ. There's one missing. It's the water witness. It's the mystery of Adam. The scriptures are a living thing and they're four-dimensional. So you think you're reading something two-dimensional, you're not. It's more than three, it's more than three-dimensional. It's multi-dimensional. And once you begin to see the patterns, you're going to start off just with faith. And then the seed is going to be planted in good soil and be watered, and then it's going to grow, and then new seeds are going to drop, and off you go. That's the way it begins. This is the method that God uses to hide his his wisdom from the devil. And his children. They don't have any good soil in their hearts. They can't see it. And they're never going to be able to see it. The veils inside of them are broken. They're marked. The mark of the beast for now is the broken veils. Many people are looking for a man. It's not going to happen in our lifetime. That happens at the end of the age. The temple is us. Christ is in us. The Antichrist is in the sons of disobedience right now. He's already defiled them as a temple. That work has been going on with the mystery of iniquity since Paul's day. So some people that are waiting for the Antichrist to appear, it's he's already appeared. He's already in them. They don't understand the truth. They are blinded by the looting influence, and they're going to believe what is false to the day they die. And if I try to straighten out what they're, they're doing, I'm going to be their heretic. They're going to want to crucify me like Jesus Christ. They're going to chop off my head like John the Baptist. Therefore, you don't see me trying to straighten out the broken doctrine of other people. I am available to answer your questions about God's hidden wisdom. That's a positive thing that I can do for you. If you can send me commentary from these 2,000 different denominations, I'm not interested. I'm from a, a family of ministers. And 
they were blinded by denominationalism. And know there's thousands of ways to interpret God's word and there's only one truth. I, I want to share that one truth with you, but whatever Paul Begley, whatever these other online ministers and all that are doing, I'm not interested in quoting them and sh in the error. Every now and then, briefly, I'll do that. But the idea is to place a stone on which you can stand and see better. And a path, show you a path that leads you around the dark, the darkness that you're looking at into the light. That's what really what my goal is. This is just one chart from the Mystery Explained. Okay, so the Son testifies about all the water, all the blood witnesses, the Holy Spirit about all the water witnesses, and the Father, my Father in heaven, testifies about all the spirit witnesses. So the heavens do the same thing. You'll see glory associated with my Father in heaven, and the Almighty, and the heavens, all the spirit witnesses. That glory from the Father is what's given to the Son. The Holy Spirit is as a priest for the Son, like that my Father who art in heaven is the prophet. The Son is the King. And all authority to judge must go to the Son. It must go to the Son because at the end, the middle part of the Son, let's see if I can pull you up the right, which diagram I want. Uh, I don't see the one that I'm looking for. But it's the... Uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Oh, I'll do it right here. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The Father gives all authority to judge. This is John 4. To the Son. The Father is like the prophet. The Holy Spirit is like the priest. The Son is like the king. Just like these three witnesses. Just like the heavens. So the, the relationships. The relationship that your soul has with your spirit is the same relationship that the Son has with the Father. So your spirit gives your soul the, the authority to judge. Your judgment is not from the spirit and it's not from the body. It is a soul thing. And your soul it was begotten by the overlapping of the spirit and the body the same way that the son was begotten by the overlapping of the power from on high and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to get into that a little bit more down here. So this is about the testimony and once you when you when you grow stronger, you're going to see that these witnesses all testify about one another, and they're all doing it simultaneously. The key is for you to understand the story, and then something a lot. When you understand all of these stories, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Whenever you understand these stories, you understand the characters. You understand which is a spirit witness, which is a water witness, which is a blood witness. And then all of these voices start sounding off inside of you. They're all testifying at the same time. And you're going to realize that God's word is alive inside of you. It's alive inside of me. And it is testifying all the time. Because you have access to the heaven realm through your inward relationship with Christ in you. You have access, Gary and I were talking about the last time we talked. You have access to the infinite realm. Because inside of Christ in you is God in him, reconciling the world to himself. So your access to the infinite realm is not by looking outward, it's by looking inward. And Christ in you and God in you being developed inside of you as incarnations. And you understanding your relationship with them. It becomes, you become extremely powerful through the three witnesses testifying simultaneously. You as a servant, Christ, and God inside of him. God inside of you wants to testify to those around you. And when God in you testifies to those around you, it is an extremely powerful thing. It's not you. It's not me. I'm just a servant. Lowly, lowly servant. Christ in me, that's God's anointed. God's chosen. Sometimes he's speaking. And God inside of him, when God Almighty is speaking, people better listen. Because judgment comes right along. It can come instantly when people deny the testimony of the Almighty. Inside of our brethren. God testifies to me and other people. And Gary and in David. and God's testimony. When I don't listen and don't pay attention and God's testifying to me, something happens. I'm going, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. You know, Hide signs 20-20. 
I can tell you from experience throughout my life, when people don't listen, something can happen. It can happen almost immediately. Okay, so the, um, Luke one thirty five. That's the pattern. Let me see if I have this one pulled up. Should have. Luke one thirty five right here. The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit, this, the water witness, will come upon you, and the power of the Most High, that's the Father, will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child is called the Son of God. So you have the Spirit witness on the top, the water witness on the bottom, and the little sliver in the middle is the begotten aspect, the blood witness. The Son is the blood witness right here. The same thing happens in Genesis 1, 6-8. The water is above the firmament. The water is below the firmament. They overlap. The firmament, the expanse, is called heaven. It's the begotten blood witness. Your soul was begotten the same way. The physical body from the earth, the spirit from on high, the spirit, that the Almighty. He's got your spirit in his hand, and boom, he, he, he puts that in the womb of your mother. And your the physical part is in the womb of your mother, and the two overlap and your soul is begotten same way all of the blood witnesses in the entire bible are begotten aspects all of them when you see the spirit water blood relationship then it makes a whole bunch of things make sense that wouldn't make sense otherwise next question how do you describe now there's different names for Jehovah and blah, 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 if the names of God, these are not the names of God. If Jehovah is involved, that is the Lord. And Yahweh Elohim, the Lord God, is the Hebrew. And these are the names of the Lord God, who is the Lamb of God, who is the Son of God. So in Genesis 1, God is working. Just read until God rests, Genesis Two, three, God rests, and the most important part that's not explained right there is where did God rest? God rested in His Son. His Son is the Lord God, doing the seventh day work. God worked six days, rested. Seventh day, that's the Lord God's work. That's the Lamb of God, consecration. He's doing the work of a priest. For now, and you, when you see the priest standing at the right hand of God, that's because that's what. Uh, Stephen saw, standing at the right hand of God, because he's doing his intercession work. That's what he's doing, the Lamb of God. He's walking around, standing up for this moment, until he takes his seat on the throne. That's coming during the day of the Lord. That's still coming. So, if English is your first language, then God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Almighty, is God of Genesis 1. The Almighty, from Revelation 1.8. This is God who sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins and the God who raised his Son of God from the dead. The Lord God of the Old Testament is the Lamb of God, standing in the center of the throne of the New Testament, who formed Adam from the dust of the ground and took Eve. So when it's talking about the garden, these visualizations that you have of the garden in Genesis 2 and Adam being pulled out, that's all taking place in heaven. and It's taking place in the same place as Revelation 7. The Lamb in the center of the throne in the garden that surrounds it. There is no incarnating on the earth until Adam and Eve are cast down onto the earth in Genesis 3, 21. That is whenever they were put in human skins. People fabricate that this is animal skins that the Lord God and they're already on the earth. That's not the truth. Right after this, first of all, it says in verse 20 that Eve is the mother of all living. That's all living in the whole universe. And then the skins come in verse 21. And there's no procreation before then because there's no procreation in heaven. Adam and Eve are the two olive trees on the earth and the two lampstands that stand in heaven. They're standing before the, the, the Lord God and the Lamb of God right now. Sometimes they incarnate onto the earth. There are olive trees on the earth. The lampstands are always present before the Lord, the Lord God. Okay, so there's a difference between, I, I just heard somebody yesterday talking about how Jesus was fully God and fully man. 
Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man. Jesus Christ, to say he's fully God, says that he's the Almighty, and he's not. To place the Son of God, to worship the Son of God as the Almighty, transforms the Son of God into an idol. You can't worship anything that's in heaven. Read the commandments. Anything that's in heaven, or under, or in the earth, or under the earth. And God's in the infinite realm. Nobody's seen God at any time. The Almighty sent the Son of God. And Jesus Christ claimed to be the Son of God. So that's what he says. John chapter 10, start at verse 34. When you get to 36, it'll say, he says, I'm characterizing, why are you getting upset with me whenever you're God's? And I'm only saying I'm the Son of God. That's what he says. Because he is the Son of God. No more, no less. He's not just a man. Pardon me, I had to stop and get a drink. If you go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 or 20, then you'll see that the Holy Child is conceived of the Holy Spirit. Not conceived of woman. Not If, if Christ was conceived of Joseph and Mary, which he was not, then he would inherit the same sin of Adam. If Jesus Christ was just a man, if he was fully man, as some people say, then he would be the greatest born of woman, right? Well, Jesus Christ was asked, and he told the truth about the greatest born of women, and he said exactly who it was, and he didn't say himself. He said it was John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist is the incarnation, another skin, just like Elijah and Joshua and Abraham, of our father Adam. He was he had the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb, baptized with the Holy Spirit from the tabernacle, came home with his father. Remember who was chosen by Lot? Verse 5, Luke 1. Zacharias. But he didn't believe it whenever he was told. And he was struck dumb, but he carried the spirit from behind the temple, and that went with John the Baptist until it was given to the Lord God who formed him. Because John the Baptist couldn't go to Calvary for his own sin, that had to be done by the Lord God who made him. Jesus Christ is the incarnation of the Lamb of God, who is the incarnation of Christ Jesus, who is the incarnation of God's Word that is one with God in God's infinite realm. There's a whole lot of incarnating going on. For the Lord God and for you. David, uh, Gary and I have gone through that several times, haven't we, Gary? Getting a picture of all the incarnations can be difficult. So if English English is your first language, then, then uh, this is the way that it works. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, period. Trying to transliterate from the Hebrew, after doing this my entire life, People that want to trans Yeshua and all these other names, these are folks that have difficulty understanding Jesus Christ is just simply, simply, simply the Son of God. The Word of God incarnate. That's what he is. That's who he is. He has the appearance as a man. That's what it says right here. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Death on the cross. For this reason, God highly exalted him. He bestowed on him the name which is above every name. He seated him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's in the almost infinite realm. He's already there, done, complete, at the right hand of God. I showed you the picture of him. He is the face of the man, almost infinite. He is the incarnation of the Lamb of God, still serving in the center of the throne of this universe. He's already done and complete, seated, done. And you and I are seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Then he says, explain one of my favorites. Philippians 2, start at 9. This is the one I was just quoting from right here. I think you should pretty much see the picture. So he, he says, explain. That kind of threw me a little bit. Proper understanding of God's incarnate word can be quite tricky. So this is what I explained to you already. When you go all the way down and you get to Ephesians 2, you'll see that Jesus Christ, I think I have that pulled up. I think I want to read it for you, even though this is getting real close to an hour already. 
Okay, this is the uh, Alpha and Omega, the Lord God. God who is, is the blood witness. God who was, is the water witness, the bullock. And God who is to come, the Almighty, that's the spirit witness, prophet for God who is. God who is has the eyes of an eagle. He can see everything that's happening right now in the whole universe very, very easily. To look into the past, he needs his priest. God who was. To see the future, he needs God to come. Prophet, priest, and king rolled up into one. Who is testifying for the original singularity? God who is. The same as the Son for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The same as the heavens for the heavens, heaven, and earth. The same as your soul for your spirit, soul, and your body. Do you see the pattern? Spirit, blood, water. Those blood witnesses are king, man. The, the spirit witnesses are priests. And the water witness, I'm mean, sorry, the, the spirit witnesses are the prophets, and the water witnesses are the priests. I had that backwards. And that's part of the questions that Joseph's about to ask. Okay, this is the, um, when the heavens and the earth, and this should be singular, when the heaven and the earth were completed, and all of their, their uh, heavenly lights, oh, I want to get down here. See, this is where God rests. I was thinking I was starting here at four and I'm going, this doesn't sound right. God blessed the seventh day and he sanctified it because in it he rested from all of his work. And the key to understand is that he's reconciled the world to himself from in Christ. So whenever people were looking at Jesus Christ, God was looking right back at them, right sitting incarnate inside of his soul, looking them dead in the eye. And those that persecute you, they have the same problem. Because Christ is incarnate in you and God's incarnate in them. And whenever they're persecuting you, God's looking them right in the eyeball. It's not going to be good for them. This is the account of the heaven and the earth when they were created. In the day when the Lord God. Right here. Yahweh Elohim. The Lord God. Made earth and heaven. Now this is local. The creating that God did is the universe. This is local to this planet, to the heaven and this planet right here. The Lord God. So many people are deceived. They think that Genesis 2 is a, is a reaccount of what happened in Genesis 1. It is not. This is a whole new ball game. That's local to this planet Earth. This tabernacle right here. The tabernacle that's above in heaven and this earth are connected. So people on the earth, I mean, the way is blocked right now. The cherubs are guarding it. But Jacob's ladder is going to be used. It's going to be used by everybody. Because just imagine whenever there's no more death, how are people going to go to heaven? They're going to go up Jacob's ladder. They're going to serve David on his throne. Just read Ezekiel 37, start at verse 24. Forever, forever. And there's going to be no more death. After they serve David, they're going to go up Jacob's. There's going to be a big ceremony. Hey, you made it. You're going to go up the ladder, up Jacob's ladder. Whenever they emerge, there's going to be some disorientation. They're going to be looking backwards. Everything's backwards. When you first walk up there, everything's backwards. You're looking the wrong way. You turn around, and then you're going to see the lamb in the center of the throne through all what looks like a bunch of chickens, their garments. There's the wider ones in the front. The bigger ones and the wider ones are in the front. They are the intercessors for everybody in heaven. But then, everybody that serves David is going to serve the Lamb. Ages and ages. Eventually they grow up, they mature, and they join us in Christ Jesus through the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19, start at 5. At the end of every age is the marriage supper of the Lamb. Those that make it join us in Christ Jesus. They join us as members of the Lamb. It's that point that the the Jews are going to realize that the Goy beat them to the punch. God's going to make them so jealous. Every age that goes by, we get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. More rewards. By the time Peter, John, and James. Peter, John, and James are the final three to join us in Christ Jesus at the end of all the ages. And whenever they show up by then, we are gigantic. They are little peep squeaks. The ones that had no faith.
then um in the commentary it talks about how how verse 10 is what i'm trying to get at he who descended is himself also he who ascended far above all the heavens so that he may fill all things this is some of the most important verses of the bible he's going to fill all things because christ is incarnate inside of every one of us that obey the gospel he's filling us up as we are maturing through the ages and the ages he's growing inside of us and eventually to fill all things god in him is going to fill all things that's god becoming all in all first corinthians 15 verse 28 if you read the verse before that 27 it's going to show you that the son is doing his thing and the God is doing his thing so that God can become all in all. God becoming all in all is ev heaven and earth going back to the infinite realm. Because his goal is to restore Adam, who was murdered in God's infinite realm. That's what this is all about. The restoration of all things. Think about that. The restoration of all things. That's the final two verses of the Old Testament. That's what Christ says in Matthew 17. Elijah must come first and he must restore all things must he's the prophet of acts 3 started verse 19 to get 26 the restoration of all things is verse 21 okay this is the part right here being riches in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our transgressions made us to, alive together with christ for grace you have been saved and raised us up with christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in ages to come he might show his boundless riches of his grace towards those of us in Christ Jesus. Well, if you read the verse, read a couple times, and you're going to realize that he raised Christ up. That was after his resurrection, after he ascended. He seated him above all the heavens in Christ Jesus. That's the almost infinite realm. You have to realize that for him, for Christ to be seated in Christ Jesus, that Christ Jesus and Jesus Christ are two different things. One is the incarnation of another, but both are incarnations of God's word in God's infinite realm, just like the Lamb of God. And so, some may be thinking that this seems way too complicated, that God's word cannot be this complicated. And my message back to you is, God is no simpleton. Everything that I'm showing you is supported by Scripture, but for one, that's... God has given eyes to see. This is it. This is this is uh, His plan through His Word, his, his Lamb of God, through Christ Jesus, the Lamb of God, and then Jesus Christ at His right hand. That's that's His plan. And this is the this is what he, uh, was quoted. This is what Joseph quoted for me to look at. This is whenever the glory, whenever Moses came back from behind the veil of the temple it was the tabernacle of Moses back then the temple didn't come until until David but um, when he came back then his white was his face was shining bright with the spirit shining white and that's a similar what's that's a similar situation to what's going to happen whenever we emerge from God's temple in heaven and we go testify to the citizens of heaven they're going to be running towards us like we're rock stars. And then when they stand in front of us to hear the testimony that God has given us to give to them, their faces and their glow, their garments are going to glow bright. And they're going to turn and they're going to take the testimony to, into all creation. That this came from the sons of God that emerged from the temple of the Almighty. Really, really great stuff. Indescribable words. This is the Acts that I was just talking to you about, this prophet. Um, heaven must hold Jesus the Christ by the hand who's appointed for you. It must Heaven must receive him, if, you go, if you're understanding the Greek, then it must hold his hand, until the restoration, the period of restoration of all things. Christ must stay until the end of the age. He's going to return on the clouds. That's what he says about which God spoke about the mouths of the prophets from ancient times. So all the words of the prophets have to be fulfilled. Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your countrymen. To him you shall listen regarding everything he says to you, and it shall be that every soul 
that does not listen to that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Who is that? It's Elijah. Christ said he must come, Matthew 17. He must. The, the disciples asked him, why does, do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And that's he, re, he reiterates, Christ, Elijah must come first. He must restore all things. So this process has to happen during the day of the Lord before the Son of Man can return on the clouds and us with him. We're going to return with him. People are looking up thinking, oh, Christ, like this is the end of the age. At the end of the age, we're going to return with them. That's what Paul says, Colossians 3, start at 1. By the time you get to verse 4, you see, when he returns to great glory, then we shall return with them. We're going to. We're going to be with them 3,600 years before that because the rapture is about to happen. Now, this is about to come to. I'll go ahead and, and read it now. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found spotless and blameless by him within peace at peace, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him. The wisdom given him. That's the mystery. Ephesians 3, start at 1. Colossians 1, start at 24. Wrote to you also in all of his letters, speaking to them of these things, and which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and the unstable distort, as they do the rest of the scriptures, to their own destruction. My right hand is up. Those among us that are mixing the water ministry of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom for the priest, with the blood ministry of Jesus Christ for the rulers and the judges. For that's the word of the cross, gospel message. Those that are mixing them together, that's what denominationalism is. And they're picking out. It's like they take the kingdom doctrine and grace doctrine and they put it all in a big pot and they take out what tastes good. That's done by the Catholics, by the Baptists, by all those that are blinded by denominationalism. They are doing so to their own destruction. It's better off that they never even read one word from God. And sometimes you guys are writing to me and I'm it's as if I'm splitting hairs. But that's because God has shown me these things in great detail and he holds me accountable. And if I just, if I'm sloppy and don't do my due diligence and give you bad doctrine, oh my goodness, that's going to put a blemish on my garment in heaven and take away from my rewards. And that is not an option for me. My goal is to win this race, to help as many people as possible, help them to see God's wisdom, help them prepare physically and spiritually for what's coming from space. This is just like in the days of Noah when the black star was coming. Noah was giving warnings like I'm giving warnings. And at the end of the age, God's sons are going to be giving warnings too. God uses the black star to divide times from times. And the prophet of Acts 3 is in the world right now. And whenever we are taken, then he's going to have all the power of the Holy Spirit and the Father in one person. And God help the earth that doesn't do what he says. Because if they don't do what he says, they're going to be destroyed instantly. The ground will open them up, open up and swallow them. The lightning bolts will come from the sky and destroy them. They're going to do exactly what Elijah says. And that includes the sons that are flying around in the spaceships that have been here for millions and millions and millions of years. The same spaceships that they took them to heaven in back in 2 Kings chapter 2, start at verse 10. Chariots of fire. Elijah, they, they, they land, Elijah gets on board, take them to heaven. Because they are God's custodians. And the black star is about ready to make a mess. And the only way this works is the sons from space help out. So that's all the verses that I want to show you. We're an hour and nine minutes in. And let's see here. The appearance as a man, so I'm explaining what was up there above. I want to try to wrap this up. The um, This is the three witnesses of the tabernacle. Three witnesses, see it? The veils. And this is the three witnesses of God's living word. It has veils. First veil, book of Acts. And he's asking me, what does it... Why does it seem to me that the Old Testament is water? So he has things backwards. Remember, like I just mentioned a minute ago, I had things backwards. It's easy to do. And it, he has an annoying feeling. 
But the Old Testament came first. Spirit witnesses always come first. John the Baptist is a spirit witness. He had to lead the way. He had to. Christ couldn't just appear. He had to have a forerunner because Christ is the blood witness. Spirit witness had to come first. And then the water witness comes afterwards. But then the blood witness is put in front of the water witness. So that's the last witness that's made first. The one that comes last is made first, but that's behind the spirit witness. So it starts off spirit and then water and then blood. But then the blood is put between the two. This is the begotten aspect. So the son came last, but he's made first ahead of the Holy Spirit. Not in first in front of the Father. That's the, that's the sayings of Scripture to try to help them. It can seem confusing until you see the big picture. God's Word is a living document that is multidimensional. It is the same exact blueprint as the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. The same tabernacle as you. Spirit, soul, and body. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. All of the three witness mystery sets follow this pattern. As you get to go through the mystery explained, you're going to see that there's uh, things get more complicated. So the prophets sit back here. They see into the day of the Lord really well. People think that we're coming up on the end of the age because they're listening to these guys. The only pro uh, prophet of the Bible that sees this mystery time is Paul. These, if you go to Ezekiel, you go to Zechariah, uh, Zechariah, you go to Joel. They see how the day of the Lord ends very well. Daniel can count the weeks going backwards. They don't see anything in here. Nothing. If they would have seen what happened in here, they'd know that Christ died for our sins. They'd know the mystery body of Christ. Our gospel, our translation to immortality. We're going to judge the world and the angels. They don't, they don't know any of that. The, that's the way that the devil didn't know. That's how. That's the reason that the devil participated in the killing of Jesus Christ. He didn't know that we were going to have redemption from it. He thought he was stopping the kingdom. God tricked him. God and God's word, many people are tricked into mixing together the spirit and the blood, the spirit, the water and the blood in wrong ways. You have to separate them, rightly divided, as Paul says. And what that in the Greek means, rightly dividing the word of truth is cutting straight the word of the truth. It's in cutting rows. But the division is made by the veils once you realize that they're there. So then there's... Uh, Hebrews is a transitional book. That's throwing Joseph off. The difference is the book of Hebrews contains water witness priest doctrine. Kingdom doctrine for priests specifically. There is no grace doctrine there. The book of Acts is the most unique book in the Bible because it contains kingdom doctrine. That's how it starts off. Peter and the kingdom, that's all there is. The gospel of the kingdom, that's all there is. It's only after you see the rejection coming through Stephen. His name means crown. So the, the gospel of the kingdom had to be rejected from Jesus, from John the Baptist first. They allowed him to die in prison. From Jesus Christ, the blood witness, came second. They demanded his crucifixion. Israel did. Stephen they killed with their own hands. That was the beginning of the, the, the end for the gospel of the kingdom. Remember, that's what Christ says. So the Holy Spirit was coming after. The ministry of the Holy Spirit began on the day of Pentecost, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Christ said, you can reject it from me. You can reject it from the Son of Man. You can blast me, the Son of Man, but you can't blast me, the Holy Spirit. Do you know why? Just because the Holy Spirit is so much greater than the Father and the Holy Spirit? No. The Holy Spirit and the Son, I mean, the Holy Spirit is the least of the Three witnesses of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the least. But it came last. John the Baptist came first, sent by God. The Son came second, sent by God. The third was sent by the Son of God. Remember, he said, unless I leave, the Holy Spirit can't be sent to you. It came on the day of Pentecost. That was the third strike. In the right as that was happening, and Stephen's d dying, being bludgeoned to death, there stands Saul, right there. And then he, his name is transitioned. Some people think his name was changed. It wasn't. His name was Paul and Saul. Well, there was a Cephas, and there, there was a... It, the, it was common to have two names. 
a Jewish name and a Gentile name. Common. Paul and Saul, same person. And if he's amongst those at which he grew up, he would be Saul. If he was those um, named by Gentiles, he'd be called Paul. The reason that the transition happens in Acts 9 is because that's the transition book inside. It's a transition chapter inside a transition book where Paul also now, Saul also known as Paul, then he's called Paul after that. Because there's a transition. The Holy Spirit, it says, this is the only place that I can find in the Bible where the Holy Spirit speaks. It says, separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work of which I have for them. That's in verse 2. And then after it speaks, that's where you see Paul's also, Saul's also Paul, and then he's Paul from there out. Because that's the transitional book, Acts 9. Right there. So um, Hebrews most certainly a transitional book. But um, if you are identifying with the water witness part of the New Testament and the priesthood and things, then it's going to be more difficult for you. If you identify with Peter, John, and James with the gospel of the kingdom and you think that's it for you, then it's the transition to see the truth that you're a blood witness, that Paul, Barnabas, and Titus, go to Acts 15, you're seeing the meeting in the Jerusalem there. Peter, John, and James are the kingdom disciples. The bride, Barnabas, Paul, Barnabas, and, and Titus, they are the body of Christ. And so they're the blood witnesses. This is a meeting between blood witnesses and water witnesses. And Paul had to go and submit to them the gospel that I preached among the Gentiles. Galatians 2. Start at 2. And then he names out the gospel of the circumcision and the gospel of the uncircumcised. Those are two different gospels, two different dispensations. And then Paul had to call out Peter because he was wrong. He stood condemned because even... Years later, just what I just read to you from Second Peter, things that are difficult to understand. Peter had the Holy Spirit, among the first to have the Holy Spirit, and still, grace doctrine, Paul's doctrine, and the mystery, that's still difficult for him to understand at the end of his ministry. The kingdom disciples don't get it, just like the Old Testament prophets don't get it. They can't see it. It's hidden in between those two veils in the holy place of God's word. That's what we're given access to. That's what God wants to give you access to. But you have to put the veils in the right place and stand in Pauline doctrine. Paul is the steward of the dispensation of God's grace like Moses is the steward over Israel and the Mosaic law. Jews don't worship Moses. We don't worship Paul. He's the slave given to us by God to give us the message. So whenever Elijah shows up and begins the restoration of all things, he's going to be the steward that is giving all of that to the kingdom of Israel. And then through Israel, the message will go out to make kingdom disciples in the whole world. And then the end will come in about 3,600 years. So that's what I'm saying here is that perhaps you identify more with Israel, the flesh, and kingdom disciples and the body of Christ and um, for some reason that you're identifying that. And that can be confusing for you. So my job is to try to help you to identify the blockages and the barriers that are stopping you from seeing Paul is the steward, this dispensation of God's grace, the gospel, the grace of God, salvation by grace through faith apart from works. There's only one baptism. That is a baptism that places you. The Holy Spirit does it. When you, whenever the preacher comes and you obey the gospel, you're baptized into Jesus Christ on the cross at Calvary. And so when he died, you go down into the, the world with him. And whenever God raises him from the dead, he raises you from the dead. So you become an active participant in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection through your one baptism. The kingdom disciples have three baptisms, one of the Father, one of the Son, and one of the Holy Spirit. It's very important you understand the difference. Once you begin to understand the difference between the two Gospels and the two churches and the four baptisms, you go through that process, then the blinders start falling away and the, the allowing the, way, the space for the good doctrine to come in. Then you'll realize, oh my goodness, water baptism doesn't have anything to do with us. Depending on water baptism can become a barrier. If you're believing in works for your salvation, then you, you obeyed a false gospel. 
the common, the most common false gospel out there is the sinner's prayer. It's the one that says that um, a lot of people preach it. I'm trying to think of the biggest name that preached it. His name is escaping my mind. It's the one that says, if you will just pray this prayer with me, that Jesus will come into your heart and become Lord of your life. Do you want Jesus to become Lord of your life? Just say this prayer with me. That's a work. You're being given a heavenly way to go straight into the lake of fire. That's obedience to a false gospel. Obedience to the gospel is the way of salvation. It's the gospel that's the power of God to those who believe. Romans 1.16 there's, a, there's more down here. This is, I wrote my Uncle Winston, How the Day of the Lord Begins. This is bonus. And then Christians need to pay attention to what just happened in the, at the Jewish University. And the updated pandemic information brought over from the Black Star Report is in this newsletter. And the bonus is, is that you have even the commentary sent by Doug, the guy that created the Nano Silver Program. You have the older and the newest down in the the pandemic section of this video. So um, there's a lot more in this newsletter than what I just showed you. And when you get your hands on a newsletter, remember if you're not a supporter yet, yeah, newsletter subscriber, you can go to the website and you can download a free newsletter. Some of you may not know where that is. Just come down here to the bottom. Go all the way down to the bottom. See this right here? Volume number three. You can click on it and get a free copy, and it's only $25 a year, and you get access to all the newsletters all the way back to 2019. So that's my mystery report. Focused up for, jo for Joseph for this one, but for everybody else that wants to look over our shoulder and benefit. Appreciate your support very, very much, and I hope that, uh, you're, like I said earlier, I hope you guys are having a good holiday. Get more information right here at tarot03.com. And I'll see you on the next mystery report that will be coming out. It's likely going to be in February for you here to get another one of those reports. And then after that, I'm going to try, I'm, do, I'm going to do my best, depending on how crazy the year is. I'm going to try to do one a month. And it's, you guys send me the questions. And I'm going to do my best. best. If it goes like this year, we'll get a, we'll get a half a dozen for 2000 and. And the black star doesn't show up in May. Then we'll get, if it's like this year, then it's going to be a half, about a half a dozen. I'm going to try to double that, like I said. Appreciate your support again. Get more information right here at tarot03.com. I'll see you on the next mystery report.